So once again, ladies and gentlemen, the indictment. How in the world could defendant Brian be held responsible if he was in his Silverado filming the murder at the time Travis McMichael murdered Ahmaud Arbery? How can Greg McMichael be held responsible? Okay, it's real simple. Party to a crime. The law does, in Georgia, believe that everybody who helped, encouraged, advised, went inside a house and grabbed their son and told him to get a shotgun and come on, they're all equally responsible for the ultimate death of the victim. Because a person is a party to a crime only if that person directly commits the crime. Travis McMichael, pulling the trigger on the shotgun, helps in the commission of the crime. He wouldn't have been able to do that if not for his father and if not for Mr. Bryan. Intentionally advises, encourages, that's what Greg McMichael's doing. Cut him off, cut him off. Go this way, no, I'm gonna go that way. What are they doing in the truck? They're working together, Greg and Travis McMichael. That's why they're both responsible. Laura Hope got up here and said, Greg McMichael's not a murderer. Yes, he is. Greg McMichael is just as big a murderer as Travis McMichael is because he's a party to this crime, okay? When three people chase an unarmed man in two pickup trucks with guns in order to violate his personal liberty, who gets to claim, I'm not really responsible for that? Under the law in Georgia, no one gets to say that. Everybody is responsible. All right, how? All right, I'm gonna give you an example. This is just an illustration, just to make a point, okay? Four men drive to a bank to commit an armed robbery. All right? You got the driver who never gets out of the car, you got the lookout who stands outside, you got a guy who goes in without a gun, and you got a guy who goes in the bank and shoots the guard. All right? So who's guilty? Under the law in Georgia, all of them are responsible for aggravated assault, for shooting the guard, and armed robbery for trying to rob the bank, or robbing the bank, all right? Because they committed the crime, or they helped in the commission of the crime, or they advised and encouraged someone to commit the crime. And of course you're saying, but Linda, only one person had their finger on the trigger in this case, and that was Travis McMichael. So how do we find Greg McMichael and William Roddy Bryant guilty of malice murder? Well, under the law in Georgia, it's as if they were all holding the gun together. And in this example, the guy who never got out of the car and was the getaway driver is just as guilty. In this example, the guy who got out of the car and just stood at the front of the bank is just as guilty. Party to a crime. So under the law, all are involved. Why? Well, Greg McMichael, he was seeking to confront Ahmaud Arbery. He was encouraging Travis McMichael to come with him, encouraging Travis to cut him off. Greg McMichael threatened Ahmaud to get him to stop. Okay? We would not be here if it weren't for Greg McMichael. Travis McMichael. Without Travis McMichael deciding to actually take his shotgun and help his dad. He could have told his dad, we're not doing this. Calm down. Call the police. There's a whole bunch of decisions both of them could have made that would never have resulted in Ahmaud Arbery's death. <coughs> he decided he was going to drive his pickup truck to chase Ahmaud, and he got out of that truck with that shotgun. Totally and absolutely unnecessarily. Mr. Bryan, who decided to help the McMichaels, without Bryan, who then assaulted Ahmad in his pickup truck in an effort to falsely imprison him on Burford, without him redirecting Ahmad onto Holmes, without Bryan chasing Ahmad toward Travis McMichael, we wouldn't be here because Ahmad Arbery would not be dead. Doesn't matter who actually pulled the trigger under the law, they're all guilty, even of malice murder.